now apostle just read my scripture in Matthew that is where I was supposed to read so let's read again in Matthew 16 is it 16 or is it 13 Matthew 16 from verse number 13 uh, yeah the Bible says when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philip he asked his disciples saying who do men say the son of man am? 14. He says, so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? 16. Simon Peter answered and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered, said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, it's interesting that where we've just read from verse number 13, the issue that began in verse 13 is a question of identity. But by the time Jesus is finishing up this statement, he is establishing the church that it has capacity to prevail against the gates of hell. Meaning then that the church is not a weakling hiding from the devil awaiting rapture. The church has been born out of power. And I realize actually it's not just sin that can disqualify you from heaven <laughs> even being weak. The Bible says nothing feeble Nothing weak shall enter there. And so you cannot possess gates this year being feeble. Because when the Holy Ghost came upon you, you received power. When the church was born, was born out of power. And that word power there is dunamis. From what Pastor Mark has just highlighted from the word dynamite. And you know, when you look at how powerful a dynamite is, it can be small in size. But a dynamite can blow rocks, can blow up mountains, can make those parts we have just said straight. And so there's a call in the spirit that you are rising up into a place of power and walk in the power of his might. You see, we need to understand that the church has to rise up in a place that we should be offensive, not defensive. Do you know, if you watch a boxing match, there are never points you get when you are blocking blows from the opponent. When you are blocking blows. Points are only <laughs> gained when you go offensive to your opponent. And unless you rise up this year and begin going offensive, there are some treasures that you will not access. But I thank God for these nine days. I say I thank God for these nine days. You are receiving not only power, but grace for you to go forth and access your treasure this year. You see, I was just thinking about being offensive and, and the issue of the four lepers came to me in my spirit. You know, the four lepers in the gate of Samaria. Uh, you know, and it's good for you to understand how leprosy is bad. Leprosy was a bad disease. It is even now. I mean, it disfigures your limbs. And this man sat at the gate and told themselves, if we go inside, there is famine. We will still die. If we remain here, we will still die. 
the action they took was an offensive action. They went towards the enemy's camp. And the moment they took the step to go offensive, the Bible says heaven amplified their steps. And the enemies heard like it was a large army. And they left. You know, everything there. And the people went there, the four lepers, and they delivered a whole city. And they accessed treasure. This is your year that heaven will amplify your steps. Don't look at your limits or your weaknesses or how small you are. When you begin going offensive this year, God is amplifying your steps to a place of authority. And we are not going to just wait and talk about those scriptures in vain. By the time we are done with this year, some of us, even this month, we are going to be testifying of the treasures we're going to access in the spiritual realm. Somebody shout amen. amen. And so I just want to go to that scripture we've read and bring some few things. That God cannot decree this year to be the year of possessing gates if he has not equipped us with capacity to possess them. When God declares be fruitful, before he tells you be fruitful, he has established the nature of being fruitful in you. When God declares dominate, you know, have dominion, he has put the grace of dominion in your life. And so God cannot speak to us this year and declare it's the year of possessing gates if there is no grace and anointing and capacity to possess those gates. So there is grace available. I'm saying there is grace available. So Jesus, before he, de he decreed that he will build his church and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it, he began the conversation with a question of identity. <laughs> and then he asked his disciples, who do men say I am? That's where he began from. And he began telling him, some are saying you are John the Baptist, some are saying you are Elijah, one of the prophets. Then he zeroed into them and says, but I want to know who do you say I am? My people, my disciples. And Simon Peter answers and says, you are Christ. You are Christ, the son of the living God. Then he tells him, flesh and blood does not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And then he goes ahead and says, and you Peter, I will build my church. Then he says, the gates of hell will never prevail. For us to be able to possess the gates of the enemy... Our basic foundation must be the revelation of Christ in our lives. There is no way you can prevail without having a clear revelation on who Christ is. It is in seeking the revelation of Christ Jesus that we lay a precedence of victory against the gates of the enemy. Now, does it mean that when you are seeking God, we are seeking him? Listen, we don't seek him because he's too small. We don't seek God because he's too small. No, we seek God because when we find him, we find ourselves. We provoke our own manifestation. And therefore, the revelation of Christ to us is key for us to walk in victory against the gates of the enemy and possess them. That was the basic foundation before Christ was able to tell Peter, I'm building my church. He told him, now that you have clear rema about me. And something interesting about their conversation is this, is that up and about before he declares you are Peter, this man is a mere fisherman. I mean, he's, he's Simon Barjona, the son of Jonah. He's uneducated, he's illiterate, uh, his identity there is just Simon Barjona. But the moment he triggers and he has clear revelation on who Christ is, his name changes immediately. Meaning that the moment you have clear realm on who Christ is, then you provoke your own identity in him. And it is that revelation now that gives you power to prevail against the gates of the enemy. <laughs> so having clear rema on who God is, is crucial in your life. Let me give you some few points, then we continue. Number one, when you locate your identity in Christ, 
your position is affirmed in the spirit. When you locate your identity in Christ, your position is affirmed in the spirit. Because the man of God has talked a lot about the gates in the morning. But I don't know whether he mentioned that, that gates in the Bible days were also places where position was affirmed. Actually, Boaz was affirmed as an elder at the gate. Mm. He was affirmed as an elder at the gate. And so God is calling us in a place where we need to understand that for us to be able to move against the gates of hell and possess the gates of the enemy, then we must have an affirmation of who we are in Christ. We must have a confirmation on who we are in Christ. Because as you go and you move forward this year, knowing who you are, not according to your circumstance, not according to your situation, not according to how the year has begun, but moving in the revelation of Christ, then you provoke your own manifestation and your position is affirmed in the spirit. One thing the devil hates is having firm believer. Because you are immovable. You are immovable. Number two, just a quick one, is that when you move in the revelation of Christ, then it triggers your manifestation as a son. Not only are you affirmed position-wise, but it triggers manifestation for you as a son. You know, Apostle has taught a lot about the gates. One of the powerful things that he mentioned some time back, I heard him talk about them, is that gates were not manned by children. They were manned by elders. And elders not in the context of age. Because you can be old on the outside, but very immature on the inside. David was a boy on the out, but a king inside. So not about the age. And sonship also is not about a question of gender. It's a question of maturity. Meaning then that you cannot advance and possess gates as a child. Let me ask you a question. If then you came and you, if a robber comes to a big home and he wants to rob that house and he finds a small child at the gate, you tell me what will happen. I mean, robbers have come to attack a home and they want to get something inside. And they find the watchman there. He's a boy. I mean, if Apostle was a footballer, that's what you call a walkover. Yeah, there's no match there at all. Uh, they'll just give him a lollipop and something <laughs> and deal with the home and leave. And matters of possessing gates are not matters of children. They are matters of sonship, maturity. That is why the world is waiting, not for the manifestation of God's children, but manifestation of the sons of God. That you can rise up in a place in the spirit and mature up as a son for you to be able to provoke your own manifestation and possess the gates. All of us, we have different areas. We need God to give us grace to possess the gates. Oh yeah. What I'm believing God to possess for may not be what you believe God to possess for. The man of God has prophesied here to people who are in the media, others who are in politics. So we are diverse in our targets of gates possession. But whatever area you are targeting to possess the gate, you cannot do that in a state of immaturity. You must rise up in the spirit of the sun you must outgrow yokes. And there are some gates also that are illegal for you to carry. Like the ones that Samson carried. You remember that, the gate that man carried? Came from a prostitute's house and he left with a city gate. Not city gate here, Nyumba. <laughs> you know, a city gate. And when he carried it, he never even went the Bible says he carried it and climbed. He went up the mountain. So you must be also very careful this year that we don't celebrate strength that looks like Samson carrying the gate without understanding where did he sleep from. So there are gates that you cannot afford to carry. If you carry them, they will leave you saved and shaved in the long run. Because before we sing about the power you have in carrying that gate, you tell us where you slept. 
And so God is calling us in a place where we need to understand <laughs> that, that our revelation as sons will trigger a lot of things in us possessing the gates. I went through, is it First Kings? Maybe you can do for me that First Kings chapter number 6. I noticed something about sonship there. Actually, let's go first to, before, it is Second Kings, but let, let's go first to, to, to Luke chapter 1, the last verse. I'll show you something. Praise the living God. Look, 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 chapter one. Let's go to look first. We'll go back to Kings shortly. You say, so the child grew and became strong in spirit. Meaning a child must do what? A child must grow. A child grew, became strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the day of his manifestation. Meaning before manifestation, there must be growth and waxing in the spirit. Because it is that time when you grow and you become strong in the spirit that heaven can consider your manifestation. A child must grow and become strong. It is that time that you assume the stature of maturity as a son. And something happened to some of the sons of the prophets. Let me just show you something briefly. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, I believe at some point they were children. But the Bible begins by saying, and the sons of the prophet say to Elisha, see now. Because every time you mature as a child of God and you assume sonship, the place where you are becomes too small. You outgrow your limits. That is why this is the year that God is going to elevate you in a place where you possess greater gates in your life. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. I mean, where you grow becomes too small. These people, it's interesting, they once fitted there at some point. But all of a sudden, <laughs> they cannot fit anymore. Why? Because they are not just children of the prophets. They have risen up to a place of sonship. I listened to, I listened to Dr. David the other day, I think Bishop Oyedipo, and he was talking about this man of God, his son. The one who has built the biggest sanctuary. You know him? Somebody, Dr. Paul Enenche. Dr. Paul Enenche. This is what he said. I picked up a very powerful statement. He said, he said that, that when when you, you, when, you, when you are just, when you are just, um, he put it. He said, sheep are only fed. Sheep are only fed. Because the Bible says, feed my sheep. Then he said, uh, laborers are only paid. A laborer is worthy his wage. Then he said, but followers are made. And he's in the following that you end up moving or becoming like the person you are following. Because you can't be in such kind of an atmosphere in these nine days under such mighty grace that we have under this man of God that I honor so much. And you still remain the same. No, something is wrong. You'll be like one person who said, there's a man of God who laid hands on people and they fell. One didn't fall. Then he tried pushing him. The guy was not falling. He tried putting his foot behind him. He was not falling. Then he came and whispered in his ear. He told him, you are bad conductor of the anointing. Go back to your seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, these nine days, if you do not change, uh, I mean, you are a bad conductor of the grace we are releasing here. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, don't be bad conductor. <laughs> and so... <laughs> These are sons who rose up in a place of sonship. And all of a sudden, they outgrew their limits. And there are some of you who have been in some places for too long. In some salary scales for too long. 
this is your year for you to occupy a higher dimension. Someone say, I am ready. It also say that they began saying, see now, even the vision changed. The vision changed. The moment you trigger manifestation of your identity in Christ as a son, and you begin moving towards against the gates of the enemy, even the way you see things change. Your vision changes. You don't see crisis. You don't see barriers. You don't see failure. No, you believe the word of the Lord for this year. It doesn't matter how long I've been waiting. This is my year to possess the gates. Your vision changes. You begin talking. You begin seeing things the way Joshua was told by God in Joshua chapter number 6. You know, God told him, the Bible says, and Jericho was tightly shut. Tightly shut for the children of Israel. None came in, none came out. I mean, that was a barrier specifically for God's children. Read the scripture. It says it was tightly shut because of God's children. But in verse number 2, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Joshua, see now. And they see his exclamation. It's loud. He told him, see now, I have given Jericho into your hand. Not even hands. I mean, Mungu amepuuza Jericho kabisa. He's telling Joshua, not even your hands. I'm giving it into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. God is telling Joshua, even before you, stop focusing on the wall, on the fortified barrier. Lift up your eyes and look beyond the wall. Victory is your portion. And as we begin this year, lift up your eyes. Go beyond that sickness. Go beyond that failure. Go beyond those losses. And begin moving in the sight of God. As a son. And you see things changing. There are so many things that you can talk about when talking about that text. You know, it talks about vision. Later on, it talks about the beam. I mean, we need your beam in the marketplace. We need your beam in church. The Bible says they were told, they all took up the beam. Uh, you know, and went to build in Jordan. Their, their destiny was clear. They knew where their Jordan was. They engaged the man of God. You cannot be blessed and you forget your prophetic covering. Some of you, God is going to bless you this year. So don't get blessed and begin thinking this church is so insecure for you. you need another one. God have mercy. Thank you, mommy. God have mercy. Because people tend to forget where they come from. Yeah. I mean, you began here in these nine days and you access your treasure. Then you shift. You end up the year giving thanksgiving elsewhere. <laughs> you know, tell me about that is bad manners. That, 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 that's a bad conductor of the grace we are talking about. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be here. Shout a big hallelujah. Yeah, you've got to be here. They told the man of God, please consent to go with us. We know we have grown. We know we are in the season of expansion. We are moving in a better place. A more bigger place. But we still need you in our equation. Because you cannot, you cannot balance your harvest equation without an apostolic covering. You can't. That's the time you lose the grace. That's why when this man of God calls me, I don't even think twice about it. But well, we don't. And we honor them and many more. Why? Because, because there's a time when the axe head can disappear. <laughs> and your brothers cannot help you. The other sons will not help you at all. They won't help you. It takes the prophet who told him, come along. He will tell you what to do. Chuma ya shoka inapoteanga. Kwa hii kitu hii. Inapoteanga unapata wale wenzako wa wakusaidi. Ni nabidu liye nae. Ya takuambia ngoje. Liangukia wapi. Liangukia pale. Afaja vitu kozake hapo. Uwone chuma ikielea. You know. So what unto you. Let me tell you. I am sounding an alarm early. Because I know you're going to access your treasure this year. May God help you. Don't go to your Jordan alone. 
Sons don't go to Jordan alone. They carry along the prophets and the apostles. Somebody shout a big amen. Yeah. One of my members who is very good in evangelism, you know, she has a lot of zeal, but no wisdom. You know, she has a lot of zeal for souls. She, she can get crushed in a funeral. Ambata Junior Nani. And say, please allow me to just greet the people. When she takes the kameme, that's it. Bing, 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 bing. People get saved. So she went somewhere and, and she, she led, <laughs> led some three, four people to Christ. Then on a Sunday, she didn't show up. So I waited for her. I asked, where is so and so? I'm told, no, no, no. That, I mean, she's somewhere. So I called her. I asked her, where are you? I mean, I've not seen you two Sundays. Then she says, you know, pastor, the harvest that I harvested last week, uh, you need to be preserved. So I've decided to, to open a church for them. <laughs> so I, I ask her, you are an evangelist. So why are you opening a church without even my authority? So I called her with her husband. And there were elders in church. And I told them, you are out of order. You know, I showed them a red card. I told them, you are out of order. Please uh, hand over those people to a local church there that you know it's spiritual. Come back to church. Uh, then they said, as we have decided, we are going to serve God. Then I read for them that scripture. I told them, that's okay. You go to Jordan. Me, I'm remaining here. Waiting for your axe head <laughs> to disappear. That is what happened. She went there for a few months. Eventually, it became an issue. The local chief began asking, who is this woman? She's coming to preach in our village without, without her husband. What is she teaching? Where is she coming from? Within no time, she was kicked away from there. So she came back to church. Instead of coming back to me and telling me, man of God, I have come back, you know, I did this wrong, please sort me. She came and just sat behind them. Waited for her to come. She didn't come and see me. She didn't finish three months. She died. You know, uh, unfortunately, she died. She, she decided to go and engage in battle she has no grace for. And as you begin rising up this year, because God is going to make you rise up, people in this service, I pray, don't go to your Jordan alone. Remember this house. Remember the man of God. And every man of God, God has placed in your life. When you begin maturing as a son, because that is key for manifestation to conquer the gates of the enemy, you must be careful with those dynamics. Be careful with those dynamics. Change your vision. They look at things. Get yourself into the fellowship. I like the way the verse continue reading from up there. They say, let us. There's nothing like let me. There's no let me there. They say, let us. Let us make there. Let us go. Let, please consent to go with us. The us, us, us is appearing so many times because you cannot come out of fellowship when you begin possessing the gates of the enemy. You must stick with brethren. That is where you are secure and you are safe. <laughs> when you begin moving towards manifest the gates of the enemy, you must understand that when you know who Christ is, you provoke his wisdom. You provoke his wisdom. So I've talked about that you are affirmed at the gate as you move to possess the gates of the enemy. That also gates were places where, where what happened? Sons were placed, maturity, mature people. Number three, I want to talk a bit about provoking the wisdom of God. And I thank God because that's one line that Apostle Ndonga really went through it a lot. Because the revelation of Christ 
gives us access to the wisdom of God. That's very key. It gives us access to the wisdom of God. Because the Bible says this. Let me just read this verse as I lay some few points. 1 Corinthians 1.24 1 Corinthians 1.24 says and then we also read verse 30. 24 says but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks Christ is come on, is the power of of God and let's go to verse 30. It says, but of him you are in Christ, Jesus. Let's read that verse together. Who became for us what? The wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The Bible has just declared there are some hidden treasures. There is wealth we need to access. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The question is, how can you access it without stealing? I know there are miracles, but believe me, no wicked man will come and tell you, please, uh, here is my flat. It can happen. It can happen. But the only way we can begin dealing with transfer of wealth to access those treasures is through the wisdom of God. That is why gates were places where business transactions were established. And you cannot establish those deals and go towards establishing your economic life without the wisdom of God. I began by saying Peter had clear revelation about Jesus. When you have clarity about God and about his, his identity, you access his wisdom. Now, divine wisdom will do three things for you. I won't talk about them. Even as we possess the gates. Divine wisdom, number one, will give you force of action. Will give you force of action. That's why the wisdom of God is different from what the world gives. The worldly wisdom can just come with knowledge. Mere knowledge. Just mere knowledge. But how many of you know that you can sit where you are seated and I drop this phone down and you know very well that that phone is misplaced. You have the knowledge that this phone is misplaced. But you can sit down and do nothing about it. Yes, you have the knowledge that this phone is misplaced. But you can sit down and do nothing about it. But the divine wisdom of God will push you to act. It will get you out of that seat. It will make you correct what you've just seen. So the wisdom of God at the gate is not making you to be dormant. It is coming with force of action that requires a step of faith. That requires a step of faith. The other day we began one of our overnight cashers and I told the church that we need to go out. I remember we, it was around 1 a.m. in the morning. I called it prophetic Kesha. So we prayed and at 1, we went out in the CBD. There's a small church I pastor in Makueni there. So we went down in the CBD there and, uh, and began making declarations. I said, we're almost over 100. So a, a woman came, an old woman, I don't know where she came from, from nowhere. And she came and told me, Pastor, Son, come here. So I went closer when the others were praying. Then she told me, it is good you've come to pray in this town at night. I want to show you the oldest tree in this CBD. The oldest tree. So she took me there. She told me this tree, when it was planted, I was a small girl. But I was present in that ceremony. And when it was planted, they buried a sheep alive Kondo, Kiwahai, under that tree. And the elders there, they said that the wealth of this town will serve the dark world, the wicked men and women. And anyone rising up to do business here, they must be in the hands of those wicked men. 
And in case you want to leave, then you don't leave with anything. And there were cases, even of believers, who have done business, when they shift, they go bankrupt. They walk away with nothing. With nothing. And so, when she told me that, I, I asked myself, you know, this revelation never came to me while in church. Yeah, I mean, I've been preaching there and pastoring and doing amazing things. I never got the revelation while in church. It took a force of action for us to step out by faith. And immediately, we were accessing some things we never thought about. And I called the church immediately. Don't say the church, the gate is a place where we make judgment. It's a court. Actually, cases were settled at the Kaji gate. So he said, this one is a bad case. We need to gather right now and, and, and pass another verdict. So we surrounded the tree immediately. And parliament was in session to enact another law for that town. And we prayed. Shout amen. We prayed. I did what apostle says. We did spiritual googling more. And we prayed. Let me tell you, the following Monday, I got a phone call from one of my members who, had a, who was a very small shop. Very small shop in a village. She made profit of a half a million. I am telling you, of a half a million, she tithed. <laughs> you know, you know the, when you receive envelopes, you must look at those. There are those that are very pregnant, and you really fix your eyes on them. You know, she, she tithed, and I was, come on, what's going on? And even now, every business of believers there is rising up. And we have declared the wicked men will not prosper in that city. The righteous must rise up. But it takes a force of action. There are some things in your life that will never change when you are the way you are. With those normal prayers. With those normal worships. With that normal offering. God must give you grace to step out in action. Do radical things for God. Shout a big amen. amen. Because the wisdom of God in the marketplace requires a force of action. And the church must come out from just mere decrees. Yeah. Do you know we prayed in that road? I remember when we were winding up the prayers, we went to the main highway. And we said, no more accidents here. No more accidents. And the mamas who were there, they knelt down and they began praying. And vehicles were coming. You know, what is happening? So I'm the one who was telling them, don't worry, we are praying for you. So just pass that side and drive. You know, and from that time, we've not had any single incident of an accident. We are not waiting for any. Why? Because the wisdom of God through Christ will come with a force of action. And we declare right now this afternoon that may you receive that force, that force you need for business, that force you need for stepping out. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Step out by faith. And things will change. There are some cycles in your family. They are terrible. They are, they are terrible things. Wicked things. You can't address them casually. You can't. You can't address them with those five minutes prayer. Those two minutes prayer. Those, that casual life as a believer. You must engage in radical action packed life this year. So I challenge you. There's a woman I prayed for. The other day, she owns a, an academy in Machakos. You know, and she called me. She told me, man of God, I've given you a number. I need to see you, please. Would you mind coming to my office? Going to see her. And, and she began telling me, I have a big problem. I have a son of mine who is 15 years. She has two children. She has a daughter who is in the U.S., married. She lives there. Then she adopted a three months old boy, and now the boy has grown up. He's 15. And the boy is huge. He's huge. All of a sudden, the boy began watching horror movies, began getting into those Illuminati stuff, and he stopped going to school and told the mother, 
I don't want you to mention God in this house. Don't even sing. Don't even pray for anything. And the mother, the moment she forgets and she decides to pray for the breakfast, the boy comes wildly, you know, and destroys everything. He tells the mother, I told you not to pray in this house. Don't mention God. So the woman told me, I want you to know you are the seventh pastor I'm bringing here. <laughs> you are the seventh in line. Hey! And I told her, stop counting those you have brought. Then she made a very funny statement. She told me, you know, when you talked on the phone, you sounded as if you are huge. Now you have come. Is it you? I said, yes, the GB are inside. The GBs are inside. Stop, stop looking at the outward side. So she asked me, would you go in the house and pray for my son now? I told her, no, 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 no. Your son has no issue. I want to deal with you. First. Because looking at you, I can see you are weak in the spirit. And I don't want to pray for demons to go and I leave and they tell you, Pastor Amanda, let me deal with you. <laughs> you know, so I began telling her, I want us to engage in prayer by faith, radical intercession. And she told me, man of God, I can't fast because I'm diabetic. I told her, fine. Then stay with your diabetes and your rowdy son. When you are ready, you call me. There was no ne negotiation about the fasting. So, he said, what if I die? So you can't die now, I'll raise you up. I mean, how can you die and we are in a mission? You can't die. So even if you die in these prayers, don't worry. I will bring you back to life. Because you can't die now. How can you die now? You can't die. So, he said, fine, let's pray. We began the following day. The first day she prayed successfully, she couldn't believe it. At night she was so excited. You know, I was pumping scriptures to her the whole day while we were praying. The second day, third day, when the last day when you opened up the fast in prayer, something happened at night. While she was praying, she heard some noise outside. And it's midnight. Some noise outside. When she peeped, lo and behold, She's being bewitched right there. Now, it's not a dream. See video, see kama video, na see kama nini. It's kama drama. I mean, live. People are outside, they are naked, they are bewitching her. Some faces are people she, she knows. So she called me immediately. I picked up her call. Told me, man of God, you can't believe it. As I talk to you now, this is going on. What do I do? I told her, open up your door and go out. But you go out. Go out and pray in tongues. Because I was convinced now that she's strong in the spirit. She opened up the door and she stormed outside and began making statements and decrees. Speaking in tongues, pointing at them. Telling them, the Bible has told me, Lord will arise and my enemy shall scatter. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Tanks, boom, boom, boom. You know, they stopped what they were doing and they ran. They came up in the morning to apologize. They told her, we realized we were bewitching the wrong house and the wrong person. <laughs> Kindly pray for us because the fire you are releasing here has been burning us until now. Please pray that that fire just goes. We will never come here again. After they apologized, the young man told the mother, there is a man of God who has been coming here to pray with you, mommy. Can you tell him to come now? I want to give my life to Jesus. And I led the young man to God. There are some stuff in your life this year requires your force of action. Begin doing things above the average. I'm saying above the average. Wake up at 2 a.m. Pray for two hours. Give crazy offering. Give what you've never given before. When you take those steps and force of action, believe me, believe me, those gifts you are talking about, you will possess them. You will possess them. You will begin making, you will determine the climate in your family. You. Yeah. You're going to stop cycles that have been there for many years as you possess those gates. In the name of Jesus.
Wisdom comes with force of action. Number two, divine wisdom that we need to possess gates of the enemy. It also comes with insight into reality. Not just insight, but insight into reality. I'll tell you what that is. Because one of the things you must overcome this year is overcome facts. Don't live in facts. Facts operate in the natural world. We are not of that world. We are supernatural. Above the natural. That is why Abraham, the Bible says he faced the fact. He confronted. The fact stood before Abraham and told him you are old. Your wife is barren. But Abraham confronted it. And said nevertheless I have a promise from above. I'm a father of many nations. Wisdom of God will make you operate in that realm of reality. Where you see things like God. That's why we are beginning declaring this year early as now because it's a spiritual thing. When you see it as early as January, you will possess it. Early enough, you'll possess it. Your house is there, your job is there, your promotion, your health is there. <laughs> Those doors we are talking about, they are, they are there, they exist. But the wisdom of God you need needs to make you operate in a realm of reality. So wisdom comes with force that will push you into a level of insight into reality. Where you're going to be exposed in things the way God looks at them. That you can rise up above the facts in your family. Facts in businesses. That woman I'm telling you about that, that made over half a million when I went to pastor that church she wanted to shift. The town. Told me, Pastor, I've had enough of this town. I want to go to Kilifi. I told her, no. You remain here. Because we have been told by that scripture that the church has capacity to prevail against the gates of the enemy. So she's remained there. Now as we speak, she even bought the building. Now she has even planned to raise up a story building. Right there. Apostle has mentioned that I'm, um, I'm the coordinator, actually, of the Machakos Pastors Alliance. And I was there when we were making decrees on Machakos. Some of you, you just hear about Mutua. Uh, Governor Mutua is good, but he found an atmosphere that the pastors created. And I'm going live because it's something I, I was present. We began asking ourselves as ministers of the gospel, what's wrong with our town? The, the, it is the first capital of Kenya, but if Kenya didn't know, Machak was the capital city for 10 years before they, <laughs> they brought it here. You know? Uh, for 10 years, we had the first chief justice. He was a man from the UK. Yeah. Uh, and many things that I can tell you, so many things. When these guys came, the missionaries, they came to our land first. Before they went to Kikuyu and elsewhere, they landed in Ukambani first. Some of them are buried there. So we began asking ourselves, what is ailing our land? I mean, if there's a time when the major denomination in this country were headed by a man from the UK. Uh, man of God, are you tribal? I'm not tribal. Even God has tribes of Israel, so... God, deal with God first before you come to me. Uh, go ask God why he has Alikwana Makabila Israel. Eh? No apology there. No apology there. <laughs> Bible says that all tribes shall gather. So, so we began asking ourselves what is ailing our land? I mean, we, we have ministers who are many. Our tribe is almost Levitical. You know, we, we don't struggle producing pastors. No, we don't. They are there. We don't struggle. They are there. <laughs> Including the one speaking just right here. So, we began asking ourselves, what is ailing our land? And so we gathered. I remember the whole movement was pioneered by Bishop Peter Silla, if you know him. So he came. I'm the one who was interpreting for him on the pulpit. 
when he held the first meeting. So when he came in town, many men of God never attended. It were very few, were less than even the group you see here. It were very few. And the meeting was heavy. Hey, was heavy. Because grace is not determined by numbers. No, not numbers. We were very few, but there was very heavy grace. So I stood with him, we interpreted, and we finished up the meeting. Immediately after that, we were just taking tea. His worship team was driving back to Nairobi. They went to pick Nissan. Within a few minutes, we were called. We were told they have had an accident. And he lost three of his members. A very, a very, a very funny place. So when that happened, we realized this battle. So the church, it triggered revival. So men of God came together. And we said, we're going to take care of the funeral and stuff like that. Then we now told ourselves, we'll have another meeting. Yeah, the devil can't stop us. We'll have another meeting. Yes. By that time, the town is being controlled by very few wicked people. Very few families that we know very well they are wicked. And they don't hide. They are wicked. Let, actually, not more than five. Yeah, you couldn't invest in that one without them approving you. You're investing there. So, so we, the gates... So we had a meeting in the public. We said, this one, we're not going to have it in church. No. You know, that's what a crusade is. It's an open meeting dealing with the devil in public. Yeah. Uh, and disarming him in public. Yeah. There are some things you need you to come out of your door and pray outside. Go outside your house and make decrees. Open heaven. It works. Oh, it's called open air. There is no barrier anywhere. <laughs> no barrier. I have tried. It's working. Just put a comma in that story. I'm coming back. Let me show you something what I did. I'm coming back to that story. You know, this open air thing works. You know, the apostle the other day, two years ago, he prophesied to me. I was in Juja. And he told me, man, man of God, you're going to go places. Uh, doors are opening up. You'll be leaving a place, they ask, who was this man? So it is happening. So I was away from my church for almost two weeks. And I came back. When I came back, I found my elders wanted to talk to me before I preached. And they were insisting. We need to talk to you, please. So, so they, I sat down. They told me, while you are away, while you are away, something happened. This plot next to the church as you can see. Are you seeing people? I said this. I can see people. Who are they? I said, they are waiting to see a witch. There's a witch who came two weeks ago and is gaining influence very fast. So those, that team you see there, they are queuing to see him. What do we do? I told them, let's go to parliament first. No laws are enacted on parliament corridors. You judge. For, so we went to the church service and kaleka kitu kakakuja. Kakakuja too. Boom. And I knew that's it. Now let's dig. So I told them, because you are not the people with the problem, give me three minutes, I am coming back. I had a mic like this one, a wireless. So I went outside the church and met the Chris there. And I said, I shut down every network of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. We can't have two priests. In the same location. It's impossible. One of us has to go. And it's not me. It's not me. One has to go. Let me tell you. When I made declarations, I came back to church. After 10 minutes, the witch sent someone. Physically, not a dream. I'm in church preaching. And a woman enters at the back door very huge and she's screaming my name telling me we are finishing you today you know you just put them down and she kept on coming people don't don't touch her let her come let her come so she kept on coming to where i was standing that woman came where, where I was standing 
So it was like a movie because I was on the pulpit coming down. The woman is coming. The members are watching. <laughs> so I pointed at her and I told her, just like a few minutes away, I told her, devil, bow your kingdom. And she fell right where I was standing. She fell there, completely paralyzed. I didn't even pray for her immediately. I told them, when you're ruling, there's no hurry. Hurry for what? There's no hurry. You can't find Uhuru telling his wife, please hurry up. There's traffic jam along Mombasa Road. We need to go to Dar es Salaam. Never. Never. Oh, by the time he's changing his ties and deciding which suit to wear, the roads are closed. They are closed. So I said, I'll pray for her later. I preached Christ. I finished. Then I went back to her case. When she was being delivered, then she mentioned she has been sent by that witch. Luckily enough, she got delivered. I led her to Christ. She got born again. So I told my church elders, we have an urgent meeting. We are taking an open air right outside that plot. That's what I, take. I, that's what I did. I did. I told my PA guys, make sure you put speakers facing the plot very well. <laughs> I want to preach there. Si ame tumana. Si ame tumana. As I so I preached for, five, <laughs> for one hour. I preached and I said, by the time I'm done with this meeting, with this crusade, they will know that a prophet was standing here. And I left. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the man woke up. He woke up, he was coughing, he took some water. He coughed again, given some water. The third time he coughed and he kept silent. He died right there. So I was called, I was told, Pastor, you know, <laughs> so on Sunday I came to church and I found a woman kneeling right there, lifting up her hand, saying, I want to get saved. I want to get saved. So I asked her, Who are you? Say me, I'm the wife of that man. I realized whatever you have has more power. So I led her to Christ and uh, we helped her the following week. I told people this woman was eating money from, from a sorcery, so let's raise some capital for her to do some business. And we possess that town. Now, today it is illegal. It's illegal. They can have their business elsewhere. Not within the area where I am. My province? No, 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 no. We can't have two people ruling. It's impossible. So we made decrees in Machakos, as I was saying that story. And we began declaring things in the spirit. We realized there's something that happened to our land that brought a lot of evil things. You know, our people bewitched missionaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stuff like that. Actually, I was told there's one of them. There's one. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm a proud man from the UK. UK is very... Wakamba wana man. Lakini le vita ingine, ye ingine sasa. They can deal with you. So, can you imagine? Uh, we are even told there's, a, there's one of the combat prophetess who saw the Wazungus coming in a vision and said, I have seen the poor coming with this color of skin. And what she did, they, they, they lit some fire na akaizima na urine. And she said, the way mizima hii motu ndiyo motu yao inazima wakifika up. So the guys came to do mission, mission work without understanding what warfare is. Bang. Some died. So he began dealing with the town. And he began making decrees. We realized even the mountains surrounding Machakos, the names are not normal names. They were named after certain wicked people. Yeah, Wangwana. And we delivered the city. And we made decrees. Within that week, God brought a vision. He began seeing a light moving and flashing towards our town. And he said, I'm restoring the glory. When we were done, that prophetic word came through that the economy, the people in this town who are very wicked, they have 14 days. An ultimatum. The 15th day, two of them died. Bang, they died. And immediately we began seeing buildings rising up. Devolution came. The governor came in and he found an atmosphere. 
that the church had created. So Machakos town is a very interesting town because the church, we control everything. Yeah, yeah actually, we, we control everything. We can, we can dismiss politicians. Uh, we can. Yeah, you joke around with us, we'll preach. Now, now, as we finish, do not, do not vote for so-and-so. Vote for so-and-so. And they, and they hear us. Yeah, we are the only county that passed the no for the Katiba. Us. Us. When you guys, you are voting, we are voting for it to go through. Us, the church in Machakos, our no vote went through. It went through. <laughs> Possessing the gates. So the things you've heard this man declaring this morning about parliament, judiciary, uh, and all these arms of government, they are not mere statements. We can gather in this house and decide how this city will go. Yeah. City will go. We can raise MPs right from here. Yes. Engineers right from here. Yes. Policy makers right from here. Yes. And we declare the church will be the only source where the best of the best will be found. Yeah. And we begin dominating those gates. Because one way the devil deals with, and I thank God for the apostle, because this church is placed right in the best place. One way the devil uses to bring dominion over his people is taking charge of a CBDs. The wicked deals that take place in CBDs, anywhere, whether it's a village, whether it's in the city, the central business district is the warfare of battle. That's where people make crazy things. That's why during the days of, of Deborah, huh? can we go there? Is it Judges chapter what? Chapter 5. Let me show you something in Judges chapter 5. Uh -huh. It says, is it, which verse is it? It says, in the days of Shamgar. In the days of Shamgar, look at that, son of Anath. What happened? In the days of Jael, the highways were, were deserted. And the travelers walked along the byways. God's children had been taken out of highways. And they were left to walk along byways. Byways ni vichochoro. All right? Look at the effect. Even life in the village ceased. Highways have been taken captive. It affects even the village life. It ceased. It says, until I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. And the gates that we are possessing, some of them this year, are repossessing the highways in our families. The highways of businesses, the highways of career, because when a highway is taken captive, even the village life will cease. There will be no life. Today, if we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we close this road, Mombasa Highway, Mombasa Highway, this Langata Road here, will have nothing to offer. Nothing to offer. So we must begin engaging warfare. So we began engaging warfare in this town. And as we speak right now, things are changing at a very high speed. Now we are opening up the city to the apostolic. This man of God has come this year, last year alone, almost three times. And again, this year more are coming, and he's coming again. Why? Because we are possessing the gates of the enemy. Wisdom will make you have foresight into the future. Let me finish there. I was just provoking you. That you rise up. That you rise up. Even some of you are working, you are straining because you need to rise up above what you're seeing. I once worked in Nairobi here for 10 years, commuting to Machakos every day. Every day. Even getting that job was a miracle on its own. Miracle on its own because I looked at the advert on the dailies and I applied for it. It was a UK firm. Went for the interview. They wanted the least person there with a the master's. That time I had a higher diploma of MEC. I applied and took myself there. So when they did shortlisting in the morning, we were 50 of us. They wanted three. So they went through my resume, my CV. They realized I have applied and I'm terribly less qualified. They want a master's and I have a higher deep. 
So a person came from the panel said, is so and so here? I said, yes, I'm there. Please come. I looked at their face and I knew I'm in trouble. <laughs> so they called me inside. Before the interview began, they asked me, sir, did you read our... <laughs> did you read our job advert clearly? I said, yes, I did. Then they asked me, then why have you... Why are you... <laughs> Why are you applied and you are less qualified? I told them, can I answer you? They said, yes, please go ahead, answer. Luckily enough, I had the Daily Nation. So I removed it and I showed them the page. And I told them, as you can see, your job advert had two sections. Section A for academic qualifications and section B for job description. Kindly jump section A. These things you have written here, these ones, I can do them. I can do them. I can do them. Do you know they looked at me? They told me, wait outside. Wait outside. So I went out. I went out uh, very boldly. Of course, the other 49 were waiting for me to ask me, what have they told you? So I told them, please come, 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 come. So they surrounded me and I told them, this job is mine. This job is mine. This job is mine. So I went aside. I, they began saying, this man has a godfather inside. Oh, anajulikana huko ndani, ameitwa kabla tuitwe. Luckily enough, the day before the interview, I had read a very good book. Very powerful called, I don't know why it is nowadays, it's called Brilliant Answers to Tough Interview Questions. I can't recall the author. So I had prepared myself very well. I had gone through the website of that company in out. I knew their products, I knew their services, I knew everything. Went for interview, did our interview, the training and all those things. After one hour, when we left, they called me. They told me, sir, how far are you? I told them I'm somewhere along railways. Please come back to Westlands. Why? We don't know how, but the results are out and you are leading. We don't know how. <laughs> but just come. So I, I went back. I found that, that HR person telling me, but I, re I realized why you passed. Your second name. I said, what is my second name? Say, yeah, you're a man from the UK. It's true. Lakini mti ya kalivari. Siyo ingine ya uko. Ilea yesu. So I got it. And that's it. And God just gave me grace there. Year after year. Of course now, I have better papers. What I'm saying is that don't allow anything to intimidate you this year. And tell you you cannot possess that gate. You can go in his might and in his power. Don't allow the devil to preach to your ears that you are weak, you have no papers, you have a small business. Ah, 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 ah. You can go international. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, you can. Those doors should open. We can't have men of God here going to abroad as if they went to Nairobi and you are there. Yeah, the only five you've gone to Mulalongo, you come back. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I mean, you need to decide. Do like what Apostle said, pay yourself an air ticket. Do rehearsal. Go to Tanzania, come back. Shout a big amen. Yeah. yeah, do those rehearsals. Begin preparing yourself early. Because you can't go where you've not exposed yourself to. You can go as far as your exposure. Yeah. I know this is a theological controversy, but let me just say it. Apostle can correct us. <laughs> Caleb and Joshua had reached Canaan. Moses had only gone up to wilderness. You can go as far as your exposure. So when you keep on going in wilderness, that, that's okay. Uh, that's the farthest you'll go. Now, Apostle will sort that later. Uh, but <laughs> my point is, you can only go as far as your exposure. That's why we're exposing you as early in January, letting you know there are treasures on your behalf. 
There are buildings on your behalf. There are cars on your behalf. There are doors opening up. Opening up in the name of Jesus. Let me finish up by saying this. Wisdom of God will give you foresight into the future. Where are we getting this from? I'm talking about when you have clear revelation about Christ. The gates of hell will never prevail against you. That Christ you're talking about is the wisdom of God. And will give you foresight into the future. God can give you a preview of this year. And he has given us already through these words. It's the year of possessing gates. The Bible talks about Joseph, how this man saved the whole country. Through wisdom, he knew what is coming up. He interpreted the dream of the king. He told him seven years are coming of, of what? Of plenty. Another seven years of famine. Wisdom of God gave him foresight into the future. God can make you travel to December 2019 and make you see what belongs to you and what you can have. And then tell you now we can begin the race. That's why the Bible says he makes known the end at the beginning. He makes known the end at the beginning. You know what that means? That means before God does anything, he finishes. Before God begins, he has finished. So he has gone in the spiritual realm and taken care of your February, March, April, June, September, August, December. And then now tells you, now proceed. The whole year is taken care of. So God must open up your eyes to walk in wisdom and begin seeing what he has in store for you this year. I don't allow any other image to come your way. Don't allow any other picture to come your way. Don't allow any other revelation to come your way. Because we are living in terrible times. One thing you need to understand about the enemy, when God speaks the devil questions, the devil runs them to whisper something different from in your ear. When he told them don't eat of that fruit, the devil rushed there and told them, ah, 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 don't worry, this thing, just eat. So you must close up your ears that you hear nothing else except which God has spoken for you in the beginning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me pray before I bring the apostle. Maybe you can leave your eyes up on your feet.